Hey everybody, it's the Trout. Hope you're having a great day. You know, when people compare you to a very well-known band, that's a good thing. Well, my guest today is a band out of New York City that's been compared to Steely Dan, Stevie Wonder, and a huge amount of jazz musicians. It's because their music is, what we shall say, sophisticated or easy listening or complicated or whatever it is, it just really sounds good. I'm talking about the band Gideon King and the City Blog. Gideon King spoke to me about his influences, how the band's put together, and how the members change over the course of years, which is very unusual for most bands. But they write some wonderfully great music. It's just different than everybody else's. And I think you'll like it. It's kind of smooth listening, but Gideon's a phenomenal great guitar player. And the harmonies that his members come in and sing, well, they just make you feel great. So sit back and enjoy this episode with Gideon King and the City Block. But right before that comes on, you know what's up next. If you like this channel, give me a thumbs up or subscribe. I would appreciate it very much. So if you like Steely Dan, you like Stevie Wonder, and you like some jazz influences, sit back and enjoy this interview with Gideon King of the City Block. That's next on The Trout Show. This world I thought I knew So tell me first, um, and I know you're in, in New York City, but tell me a little bit why you decided, you know, most people want to put a band together, they go out and get people they like and all that. But why, what was your thought concept when you said, I don't, I don't really want to do that. You know, I want to get a band, but I want to change people, I want to write music. How did that all come about in your mind? I mean, um, you know, the thing is, is, is I grew up, influenced by um everything from neil young to stevie ray which is someone i know you like based upon what you just said <laughs> um to wayne shorter to to you know steely dan and brahms and seal so i have a as long as there's some some harmonic complexity to the music i'm pretty mm -hmm. drawn to it. and i was pretty drawn to uh complex lyric writers you know um obviously bob dylan neil young are complex lyric writers and amazing mm -hmm. lyric writers my wife who's a monster u2 fan okay really hooked me into his lyric writing which is kind of amazing in its own very different way so um the truth is that unless i mean i have my band has gelled into a core group of people over time Mm -hmm. But I started out very much with the theory that you write music and, you know, you get the best musical athletes possible to come in and, and, and be part of it. And obviously that was initially inspired by Donald Fagan and Walter Becker. I mean, mm -hmm. they I don't I don't need to tell you if you're a Steely Dan, obviously enthusiast that everybody from Wayne Shorter to Michael Brecker to Dennis Dias to. Oh my God, to Ron Carter, um, what was on Steely Dan recordings um, and Michael McDonald. I mean, it's, it's basically endless. Steve so, Gadd, Steve Gadd. Oh, I mean, Steve Gadd. Yeah, of course, Bernard Purdy. We can go on now. For I know years. it's amazing how many people played on. And some of the yeah, people I, I mean, found, uh, uh, Carlton, he yeah, was on Steve it Carl too. Yeah, yeah. And, Carlton, and, and, and that's where Steve I found him and started listening to his music. You know, you yeah, yeah. and then of course, Steve, you know, Larry Carlton and then Steve Kahn um, yep, and all those yep. guys. So so I was very drawn to and I the idea that 
that you could write music and then bring in all of these different musicians to give different colors. Now, I think that there is um, almost all upside from doing that. You learn from people, you, you, the music takes on a kind of, um, a, it, it takes on a very eclectic kind of uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, nature to it. And so that's really cool. If to the extent that you, you lose anything, perhaps maybe over time you can lose some cohesiveness or consistency or some common denominator if you mm -hmm. want to put it that way to your sound but over time i've settled on i don't want to say settled on that actually is the wrong way to put it i've embraced um a group of musicians that form the core band more or less only more or less um, yeah. You know, we've worked with Donnie McCaslin and John Schofield um, and and, you know, Mark Bouchard and all kinds of great singers and, and, and players. Um, but this core group that I have working with me now is a pretty incredible group of players that can do anything from play straight out pop, straight out blues to straight out jazz, classical. And so I'm finding that no matter where I set the bar they're right there. Mm. Um, in fact, I would say many of them have skills that far exceed my own. And so, um, but the idea of being confined to just rock musicians uh, is not attractive to me. I want to be able to play a rock or a funk or an R&B tune, mm -hmm. but I want jazz and classical uh, and bluegrass and country and blues i want it lurking around the music and i want it to be identifiable to somebody who's listening um and if you don't get a certain type of musical athlete involved then you're going to be deprived of that um the richness or the, that that type of eclectic um aspect to your music well i think and the other thing that's interesting to me is in the way you say athlete and is you're already starting here. You're not starting down here. You, you know, you're already up here because of their skill set. I think it's just like anything else. You can always find people better than you, depending on what you want to do. But when you're starting at that level, it just changes the game. Oh, yeah. And, and, and it also it also should make us, me and you both, better. Yeah. And these guys are these guys and women are real listeners, meaning if you make a reference to my bass player, to, um, you know, the bass player for Leonard Skinner, he knows exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. If he may, if you make a reference to the bass track on Buckets of Rain, the Bob Dylan tune, um, he knows exactly what you're talking yeah. about. If you make a reference to, um, you know, who John Coltrane was playing with, with McCoy Tyner in a 1965 recording in a minor blues they're playing, he knows exactly which bass player it is. Wow. And or if you just say I want to sound like a bass guitar, like a Foo Fighters song, yeah. he knows exactly what you're talking yeah. about. He can execute it, but it's deeper than that. He also really likes it. Meaning, I don't want I don't want jazz snobs who don't like U2 and Adele. I love U2 and Adele. Right. I love Eric Gales. I love Stevie Ray Vaughan. I love uh, Robin Ford. I love John Scott. So I want them to truly love that stuff as well, because if you don't love it, then you're just a jazz snob or a classical snob pretending to embrace something and getting paid to do it. But they really love this stuff. Um, so I have, I have, my piano player will text me on any given night at two in the morning. Hey, check this out. I'm, I'm listening to this great James Blake or this, this great, um, Oh, oh man, uh, Randy Newman recording. Oh. And then he'll say to me, I'm also listening to this Beethoven thing. Oh, and by the way, check out this Van Halen song. <laughs> and so I want people, you know, I want people who feel yeah. that kind of diverse sense of attraction to different types of music. Cause man, it just makes it more fun. And it's so much more, um, there's a, there's a kind of collectivism and an, an enthusiasm that develops when, when that type of true diversity in taste exists i don't you know and i don't know whether that <clears throat> exists in the music industry fans because they, they they go under their silos and they stay there and it, that was one thing i've always been kind of asking you know players uh if they know especially if they're younger how did you start 
Who do you like? If they start telling me stuff and it's very, like I talked to a young kid the other day, he's only 10 and he was, <laughs> he's, and he's, I mean, he's crazy good already. But here's the thing. So I said, he said, I like classical. He just got down the list that you just said. I like this. I like that. I like heavy metal. But then when I got into the meat and potatoes of it, I said, look, he said, oh, I'm learning classical now. And I said, who's your favorite classical guitarist? Most people at that age or later won't even know who Andre Segovia is. He goes, oh, man. Well, Segovia. <laughs> I said, right. my point is, I, I like that idea. Too. Obviously, I lend my, I mean, I gravitate to certain music. I mean, when you start writing, you're going to write the style that you do. I mean, I can't, I couldn't write a jazz song if I wanted to. I'm not much of a ballad writer. I can't do that. But I know what my lane is. But I'm like you and, and the, the, the bass player and probably a lot of the members of your band that you have come in. I want to hear a lot of different stuff yeah. because you pick up that little nuance and you're like, oh, I never thought about doing that. Yeah. And, and yeah it's yeah. not like you're copying it. It's just that you might go, oh, I never heard that look like that before. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The goal is not to copy. No. But, but the goal is to at least be humble enough to make reference oh, to yeah. the past yep. to the, the, otherwise you know if you, if you have no awareness of the past you know i guess unless you're some kind of pioneering groundbreaking genius which i'm not um then you just write dog shit yeah well I, and and you, you can't I, I just a big history buff i i interviewed a gal just this week and from ireland she's an irish blues singer she just told me she got a phd in blues in ireland <laughs> and, and, I, and she's going to be she's been to the states before but she's actually touring over here in april she's going to do the new orleans blues and jazz festival great singer great songwriter but it was funny to hear her talk about something that started in america but yeah. when i talk to people about the blues and i'm a blues aficionado is tell me a little bit about the history and they can't you know oh. you know you want to know because i'm a firm believer if you know it's just like people if you know where they've been, you know where they're going. Yeah. So if yeah. You start talking to me about, you know, some obscure blues player or some obscure, you mentioned jazz players. I know that you probably are aware of what the music industry is or what you're doing instead of like, let's just put something together real yeah. quick. I mean, when it comes to the blues, the blues is beyond important because. I mean, forget that it's the foundation of Chuck Berry and also, but it, it's also like, I think people have a limited, not that you asked me this question, but what the hell. No, go we, ahead. We, we, people have a really limited understanding. I, I shouldn't say that. Some people have a really limited understanding of what the blues is. They think of the blues, oh, great, B.B. King. You know, yeah. maybe yeah. John Mayer plays a gig with his trio and he plays blues. Yeah. But, 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 you know, the blues is, is, is Skip James. And, and, and the blues goes back to Louis Armstrong and yep. the blues goes back before then, even just the construction, you know, of the one chord, yep. you know, and, and what you can do over that, you know, you can play mixolydian, you can play, you can play simple pentatonic stuff. Yep, man, you, can, yeah. you, you can find a thousand chords within the associated diminished scale um, over that, you know, that type of stuff and so the blues is is honestly it's 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 endless and then when you start getting to 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 turnarounds and jazz blues turnarounds mm -hmm. it, you know when it's you know say you're in c mm -hmm. so you're and you just get into like those you know those types of turnarounds i don't need the blues is so expansive that um that it kind of bums me out when people say, oh, I really like blues. You know, I went to a Chicago blues bar and I heard this guy. But actually, the, blue, the, the, the blues is everything from, from, from Art Tatum through Herbie Hancock through, um, you know, Van Halen and through Eric Gale, who I've been checking yeah. out lately. And I love Eric yeah. Gale. I think he can really play. But, but so, so the blues is like, you know, you were saying like one, four and all that stuff. Yeah. True. But man, the blues is completely and totally endless. There are there are things you can do just on the one chord getting to the four chord. It, you, you, you could you could spend the rest of your life yeah. with that with that cadence, that musical yeah. cadence from the one four from the D to the F. 
And yeah. we could never talk about anything else. There's so many ways to get there. But you know, what's interesting. Well, here's the other thing about it too, is, and it, it lends itself to your band. Really good blues players, <clears throat> the ones that aren't even here with us anymore, had a lot of space in their music. Oh, there, yeah. There was, oh, yeah, there was a lot of space in it. And if I listen to your stuff, which I have, I've listened to, there's space in your music, brother. You know that. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. not like you're sitting around like, oh, we got to fill it up with a synth here, or I got to do 4,000 notes at one time. That is really what, to me, when you talk to somebody like John Lee Hooker, that guy never did. I mean, here's a here's a guy that never didn't much, but his he was just like, I'm in, I can't go. Why is he so freaking good? Because so, he's amazing. He was amazing. And amazing. you're like, but there's I'm nothing amazing. there. And it's like, but that's the important thing about it. You yeah, need it's, well, it's it's in every in every lane of art. I forget the expression in, in the oh, negative space. You know, it's yeah. it's the concept. It's the concept of negative space, and and, and it goes for. Uh, absolutely, you know the, the ability to lay back and do nothing makes what you do obviously twice as impactful. And um, as I get older, um, and play with better people, and actually not even that, as I just listen to myself and say, "Oh my God, that sounds like shit." What the hell am I doing? You know, as as I listen to myself, I'm learning that like if you're going to play something, especially when you're not when you're just accompanying. It really better mean something. Otherwise, you're just going to annoy everyone around you. It's going to be like it, 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 it's going to be like listening to a politician talk, just just blather and nonsense. And so I'm I'm learning over time to be more specific in what I play. And yeah, I mean, dude, John Lee Hooker is like, I mean, he's <laughs> he's 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 just he's just un, he's just unbelievable with with respect to that. And you know, there's a lot of jazz equivalents to that. Man, yeah. there's so many examples of that. It, it, it's, so, you know, when you listen to your band music, it's, it's, and I was telling somebody the other day about Asia. And I, I was, I'm oh. old enough. I mean, I, I, I go back to when Steely Dan brought their first albums out. I was in college when they brought out uh, Can't Buy a Thrill. Jack, Jack Lip, you know, Do It Again. Yeah. And yeah. of course, Katie lied and all that stuff. And then they got Asia. And, and the reason that album caught my eye, which we had albums, was even the cover was not much, but it said a lot. I just I looked at that and I go, that is the coolest cover I've heard. And it's still well and it, well if you want to man, if you want to talk about depth and space, Wayne Shorter's solo on the tune Asia. Oh yeah. Is so deep and and haunting and great. Of course we're talking about Wayne Shorter here. So yeah. it's it's like it's like talk, you know it's like referencing the NBA and talking about Michael Jordan, but like, right. but, 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 but I mean that, well, it's just funny you bring up Asia. I just think Asia is one of the modern masterworks of, oh, of, absolutely. of anything. Yeah. The, the lyrics, the, the, the music talk about bluesiness. There's plenty of blues in there and plenty of space in, in the, oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. your point is exemplified by that album. And by the way, on top of that, it's sophisticated as hell, that album. Oh yeah. As hell. It's musically sophisticated with a lot of space. It's beyond incredible. I don't know, man. It's one of the greatest albums of all time. And, and you can't recreate stuff like that. It just sits, you know, it's know. a special time. I mean, I know that they brought in a lot of different people to play on and all that stuff. But the engineering, the recording, it seems like it was all top notch. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And they were we, never. We're, we, we, we spend a lot of time trying to get our recording process. Well, really that's what I was going to get to. Tell me a little bit about. All right. And so you got an idea for a song. Okay. Right. Do, or do you write things down? Do you record? How, just tell me that you do you sit down and take your phone or you go to your little studio. What do you do? Yeah. You, you know what? It's, it's two parallel track tracks lyrically. Okay. Just, just try and hear what people are saying. Maybe there's a funny expression. Maybe there's something I read uh, an idea, something that upsets me, something that I find find funny. And I write, I will write down a little spark of a of a of a of a phrase or something like that and then musically <clears throat> i'm just always trying to find some in to something different for example the other day i was messing around with a scale the harmonic minor scale mm -hmm. now the harmonic minor scale is you know like 
right. like that's super cheesy and it, it reminds you of all the cheesy guys trying to sound like spanish guitar players but within that scale <laughs> within that scale there's actually a bunch of chords that's one of them here's another one so here's a major chord here's an augmented chord here's a half diminished chord okay and here's a diminished uh, a full diminished chord so if you do that progression All of a sudden, there's like a, a musical centricity to those chords. And, and there's sort of there's a lot you could sing over that. So there's a spark of an idea harmonically. Mm -hmm. And then I say, well, cool, let me start, let me start writing some lyrics around that or coming up with a concept. And then is it a fast, hard driving song? Is it a ballad, you know, and and so there's always some harmonic spark or I wrote a song called Desert and Sun. It's a much simpler motif. And right. so, yeah, some musical idea, something that that, you know, um, Richie Havens played something, yeah. something. There's that, a name that, I haven't heard in a long time. But it's, it's man, he was but he was a great strummer, though. Yeah, he was. Yeah. So Richie Havens. So like something he'll play or something Adele will sing, something of Foo Fighters. May, I was just listening to Brahms the other day and figuring out the chord changes and what was happening there or Keith Jarrett and just some spark. So then you have the musical spark and then you marry, marry it with a lyrical spark. Um, and then I either write the whole song, music and lyrics, or I take the skeleton to the band. Okay. And then we spend time in the studio putting, putting, you know, blood, guts and bones on the skeleton. And um, I don't think either way turns out better. I know sometimes it's a relief when other people get involved in the writing process just because it takes away some of the burden of yeah. completely finishing the song. Right. Um, but man, it's just about uh, it's just about finding these sparks. And the only way I can find the sparks harmonically is to constantly be studying music constantly. Well, right. I don't care what it is. I don't care right. if it's, you know. I literally don't care if it's the first three seconds of um, an Ed Sheeran song, mm -hmm. anything. To, and I don't even like Ed Sheeran, to be honest, but but uh, but but like anything to spark. Spark some pathway. And then the funny thing about it is people, you know, they talk about inspiration or oh, how do you get inspired? The truth is the only moment of true inspiration is the beginning for me. The initial idea. And then yeah. the rest is the rest is sort of pain and suffering and work to bring form and function to it. And people think, you know, you you're somehow inspired by some divine light all the way through the writing process. <laughs> Actually, it's a fucking it's a fucking pain in the ass. And and and, and you, you you just you, you kind of have to slog through it the way that an accountant has to get through his paperwork at 645 a.m. in the morning. You know, and I was watching the other day. It was interesting. It came up on YouTube. Ringo from the Get Back movie. Ringo was came in the studio one day and started playing Octopus Octopus's Garden. I saw that. Did you see that? It was kind yeah. of close. And he goes, "That's all I got. I yeah. like to be under this." Yeah. And then and then here comes George, or and then the rest of them. What are they doing? Slogging yeah. through the rest of the song, going, yeah. Yeah. "Okay, have yeah. you thought about that?" And and the thing about it, when you're a solo performer like me, it's. And I'm trying to, and I, I told people that I interview, I have people now, every, a lot of places that said they'd collaborate with me. Yeah. But it's not like sitting in a studio when you you got great musicians like you do, and, and you sit there and you go, well, what about this harmony? And they said, I can hear it, or I can see you doing it. Where you're sitting in a studio and people, the singers are sitting there in the booth with you, and you're kind of going over, or they get sitting in there, you know, in the, in the recording booth listening. To it. I can see that happening. Yeah, that yeah, you can't make up by yourself, yeah. and that you have to, have, and you have to have a, a mixture. First of all, you have to have nice people, and uh, and you have to have people that can change their minds. Yep, and and you have to have people that their feeling doesn't get hurt because you're not going in a certain direction. Meaning, like it's much more fun when people just throw ideas into the mix and nobody's feelings get hurt. So I think we've established a great working model in the studio, which is lots of chaos, lots of ideas, and then no hurt feelings, lots of laughter, but, but everybody knows that eventually you got to pick a horse and ride it. 
and and you got to get an actual tune done because you can't call yourself a songwriter if over the course of the next <laughs> three years you say, well, I've done two songs. It's like, no, you've got to write a lot of songs if you're a fucking songwriter. Yeah, so, that's exactly so right. I meet, I meet sometimes I meet people and they're like, well, I'm a musical artist. I'm like, cool, you know. They're like, yeah, I've been working on these two songs for four years, and it's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like I don't, I don't understand that. Like, like it's like you got to get it out. You got to get it out. And so, yeah. and so we do, we do put an emphasis on completion and finishing the idea and finishing the song. And then we put a ton of emphasis on production, a ton where we're very cognizant of the modern tools, which are endless that are available yeah. to us um, and, and using them sparingly and tastefully and still remembering that, you know, pianos and guitars and voices and that stuff's beautiful. And it, and it always, there's a reason, there's a reason when you go on Spotify, there's still a ton of streams on, 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 uh, you know, Mahler because Sure, you had cellos and 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 stuff like that, but yeah. that stuff was beautiful then, and it's and it's beautiful now. Like, I guess what I was saying is just, you know, um, the spark, uh, a, a focus on actual execution, like like honestly, like a business where you have a budget, and you have a board meeting, and you're supposed to get it done, and yeah. um, and then no egos, you know, just no egos. When you bring people in, they're excited. Oh yeah. You know, oh look, we're going to the studio. Oh, what new stuff are we working on? It isn't like, well, which, you know, Rick wrote the song. Rick wants, wants it this way. You sit down and go, all right, here's the guts of it, but I'm open. As a songwriter, you have to be open, too, because it's your, it's your stuff. But yeah. then that spark of creativity, I'm sure, comes when they all come in and they start going, and all of a sudden that catches in. Oh, yeah. And you know already because they've been with you before. They know your production values. They know you're not putting crap out. You know right. that this is a higher game that we're trying to go to. Yeah, it is. And these guys and, and these guys and these women, they get that big time. And you know what? Honestly, it's like if you play pickup basketball on the street, you know, uh, in a park, you, you look around and you say, I want him, him. You want the people that that look like the best athletes. So I've done that. And yeah. like, I just assume I say, well, these two, I've watched them play for the last half. And they're just better basketball players than I am. So like, I'm picking them. Yeah. And, 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 and it, 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 it really, it, it, it works. It works really well. If the people are really amazing musicians and they're really, really nice. Um, and they're secure in their skills. Mm. So if you can find people that are secure in their skills, it's really, that's a big deal because then it's way more fun and um, way more truly collaborative. Um, and someone who's really secure says, oh, fuck it. You know what? You're right. What I just played stinks. Sometimes I'll do a take of a guitar solo and my engineer who I've been working with for a long time, who's a drummer and a guitar player and a guitar maker and a wizard engineer. He'll be like, "Get that stinks. <laughs> like, like, like you maybe try this and like, I don't, I don't want him to say, Oh, wow. That was really amazing. No, you know, no. but maybe you could try this. I don't, I just want him to say, Hey, that one sucked. Let's do another no. one. So we could just get on with it, you know? Um, so I'm, I'm good with that, that type of dialogue. And, uh, I think we found a group of people that are feel that way. And, and I think the product is, I'm really proud of what's now coming out of our studio, more proud of it than I've, than I've actually ever been. I, I genuinely believe deep, deeply in my heart it's good quality music. If you could wave a wand and money was no object, what would you do? I would like to look. Today is, what day is today? March Today's 24th. Friday. Yeah. February, February 24th. Yeah. So when we, do, when we do our next podcast together on February 24th of 2025, okay, right. I would like our audience to con grow. I would like a community of music nerds to um to really enjoy our our music i would like to have a huge huge catalog of music so when you get on a drive to drive 300 miles to go visit your sister or brother or son or right. wife or whatever you you can listen to four straight hours of gkcb of our band's music and say wow there are some songs i really love in here um and they come from a lot of different places musically and i would like to just be a really well-known well-respected boutique band respected for competently writing interesting compositions that are, you know, hopefully a little bit out of the box. I'm not going to be, I think it's pretty obvious just looking at me. Um, I'm not going to be Harry Styles. Okay. And I'm not, and I'm not, and I'm not going to be 
um, even Gary Clark Jr. I just want us to grow. And if we if we have some huge hits along the way, great. Why not make some money? That would always be fun to make a little money. Yeah, doing well, it wouldn't. <laughs> yes, that'd be really that'd be sort of a funny joke. But 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 if um, but what I'd like to do, and we're I think we're well on the way to doing that actually, is have people say, yeah, those guys are really good. Almost the way I hate excessive analogizing, but almost the way. Years ago, people sort of listened to Steely Dan. They said, those guys are really, even before they went live, right? They were mostly studio band. Yeah, they were studio Those guys right. write amazing songs with really interesting, different, smart lyrics. Um, they're harmonically interesting and they're lyrically interesting. And um, they're just a band I really like. They're competent, interesting, different songwriters. That's all I want is for people to say that about us. I mean, and, and, and I would like the size of venue that we can fill to grow. I would like to be able to have a certain number of people in the audience. I would, you know, instead of 300, I'd like to have 900. And, yeah. and, you know, five years ago, we couldn't have three. And five, year, five years ago, we had no streams on Spotify. Now we have hundreds of thousands of streams on every song. So my hope is we just continue to, to grow. You know, I don't have any specific popularity endpoints. There's the old expression, you know, that man, man plans and, and God laughs. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I don't want to fall into that trap. Just keep putting out high volumes of really quality music and hopefully uh, more, 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 more people recognize it. Thanks Gideon. Take care. Right. Okay. See ya. This song is covered for your winter. And I beg your pardon for all I put us through. Swallow these notes Breathe in these chords Before that bitter wind Comes tearing through For the love of God Or the fear of hell No one owns a story But me and you I don't want inside Give me history Before that bitter wind My soul is singing from it.